Hello and welcome to Vets Remember, an oral history. I'm Craig Yamauchi, your host, and I have a wonderful guest for everybody today. Uh, this is the one person that everybody knows as Sheriff Bob. He was an influence on this community for many, many years, and the generation that is growing up in their 40s and 50s today remember him as a very wonderful person. Unfortunately, I was not here <laughs> as a part of that. I am, as a matter of fact, I wasn't even in this country at that time. I was living in Hawaii, and um, I, we had uh, very little TV, if any at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the little documentary that they were putting together here about you, I sat and watched that, and I was just absolutely amazed how people were so in awe of you as children, and still today, uh, marking it as a tremendous memory. And you had given these people a, a, a real uh, fine, hard edge to, mm. to, uh, uh, to live by because you had taught goodness to these kids, you had taught morality to these kids, and you left a very fine example. A lot of these children do not know, who are adults today who have their own children, do not know that you are a World War II veteran and you were in the Army in the 44th Infantry Division, and you had uh, served your time in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, unfortunately, like I said before, did not get to know who you were until just not too long ago. <laughs> but, you know, I myself am almost in the position to say, gosh, you know, I know Sheriff Bob. <laughs> but, <laughs> but would you please uh, tell the, uh, all the folks here what you did when you were in the military first, when you went in, mm -hmm. and what your job was? All right. Well, we'll start from the very beginning and see how it goes. And if it starts to drag a little bit, why then you uh, interrupt me. Okay, I'll do that. When I was 18, back in 1942, at that time we had a draft, and everybody had to sign up for the draft. At 19, you were there in the Army, or in the meantime, you could enlist in the other services. I was never away from home uh, for years. I was the only child, and guess what? They shipped me to Fort Lewis, Washington, the farthest point you could be. <laughs> yes. And really, it's a great experience. I didn't, didn't worry or get nervous about it, but I think my mother was particular, and I think this is true of all people that are going into the service. And she had told me, she said, now, I, I don't want you to smoke, I don't want you to drink, and you're going to be in with people of all the mixing pot of the world, and you are. And you soon pick, you know, figure out who your group you want to be with and associate. So it was a great education. Personally, I believe that if we were not in combat, I'll get in trouble for this, that two years in the service would be good for the average young man. I had a son, he wasn't violent, but he would do things when he got ready to do them. And my son Bob, I think, if and any other young man that didn't have to go to war, two years in the service would be a very good educational thing. I have to concur. Yes, and you're a veteran yourself. Yes. So February 18th, uh, 1943, I was on my way to Fort Lewis, Washington. There we met with a cadre that cadre trains people. And most of the time, regardless of the service, you go through a period of nine weeks of training, basic training. And uh, I soon figured out that I didn't want to be in the infantry. I knew <laughs> what that was all about. So as soon as I finished the training, I got in to a, a uh, supply company. Mm -hmm. I figured I'd rather ride and stack things and so forth. And I was in that for about a month. And it wasn't very long after that, they started what they called a cannon company, 
which was a short barreled 105 howitzer. Mm -hmm. You could move it much closer to the front line than the regular Division 105. And I enjoyed that because it was a brand new company. And the captain that was in charge of that could hand pick the people he wanted. Mm -hmm. So you just weren't thrown into it. Well, I trained with the guns a little bit, then after that, I got into the communication side, laying wire from the fire control post to the guns. And then, of course, later on, we had spotters, which traveled with the regular line companies in support of an attack by radio and a lieutenant with you. And that was uh, a little exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to sort of put this in because I really think that I began my radio cure, or, uh, career by getting some on-the-line experience during World War II. I had a fairly good voice, not right now, it's a little, it's getting old, it's like a singer, you know, you finally lose it and then you mumble along like the rest of your friends. Sure, but anyway, like George Burns. Yes, like George <laughs> Burns. <laughs> Only don't make that much money. <laughs> but it was a it was a great experience, and again, I just can't say too much about the fact that a little military experience for a young person, for a young man today, and what we see and hear in our society. Mm -hmm wouldn't hurt one bit. Uh, you will figure out the people you want to be with in the service. You'll meet some great guys. And then again, you'll meet some that you probably don't want to associate with. Right. And I don't say that to be uppity up, but I, I think you choose your friends pretty good that way. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the beginning. Now. Uh, you probably want to get in here, so ask me something else. I don't want to monopolize the conversation. That's quite all right. Yeah. I, I usually have that habit of myself, so no. it's uh, actually refreshing to have somebody else just take the reins and drive the horses. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, when you were in, um, you were in England before you, uh, you went to mm. France, no, is that correct? No, uh, mm -hmm. how we got over in Europe was we came into Shoreburg 10 days after the invasion. Out of our resolve with cold contempt, the dirty Germans stood beside their guns, and reinforcements rumbled from the right. Generals were prepared, their might was point. They looked across the heaving sea and grinned. They would reap harvest of us on the beaches, and even Death himself would stand amazed. Yet faint across the groaning of the sea came the thin thunder of a mass of power. And of course, things had quieted down considerably after the invasion on all fronts.